Milk is a popular product that is recommended by the Department of Health and Ageing as an essential source of calcium and nutrients to maintain strong teeth and bones. And every day, hundreds of farmers across Western Australia get up in the morning and milk their cows twice a day, seven days a week, to produce some of the freshest milk in the world. Harvey is a small rural town in Western Australia that is home to a various number of dairy farmers. But since deregulation, that number is changing. I uh, lived in Harvey all my life, um, 50 years, born in 1955, third generation dairy farmer. Um, and, uh, you know, grew up um, and was sort of the only thing that I really wanted to, to do. I've always wanted to be a dairy farmer. And, uh, you know, as I say, that's why we've farmed for 35 years. Yeah, it's, ever since I was a, a kid, yeah, I always wanted a, to be a dairy farmer. I always used to check the cows and feed the calves when I was a kid. and. When at school, I just used to think about farming all the time. Brought in by the Australian Government on the 1st of July 2000, deregulation was a program that was designed to keep all farmers equal. There was a lot of talk about deregulation coming up to it, probably for quite a few years before it actually happened. And um, nobody sort of knew um, what the price of milk was going to be, and that's why it left a lot of doubt um, what the future after deregulation was going to be like. We had what they call a milk quota and it was regulated and uh, it, it was controlled by, by a government body, the Dairy Industry Authority. The, the quota system um, was there so there wouldn't be a huge amount of overproduction and that the processes, process would be able to handle the amount of milk because it was all on supply and demand. Everybody got to buy their quota. Whether you can use it or you don't use it, you have to buy the quota from your farmers. And we, and we had these milk quotas and we purchased these milk quotas and took years to pay for them and every time we got a, a bit more milk we'd buy a bit more quota so that we'd only produce the, the top price milk. There was a lot of talk about what was going to happen but some of us could actually see through the um, bullshit I suppose for a better word that was going to happen and we really tried hard to um, not to deregulate. Before deregulation we were promised by our leaders that we would get 35 to 37 cents a litre and we could negotiate with the factories. My wife and I had built up uh, a quota to the value of about half a million dollars and overnight um, in 2000 when deregulation started that asset became null and void. They dropped it down to about 25, 26 cents a litre and that we've tried had, having meetings with, with, the, with the processors and they just don't want to know us. It benefited the um manufacturing company like National Foods, Peters Browns, Harvey Fresh and all now that we got a we got a bargaining tool that we can go to our farmers and say, look, this is how much we pay for our mill, thirty cents a litre, whatever the case may be. And that's the beauty of it. But at the end of the day the farmers are the one that's probably losing up. And now there's a huge um, oversupply of milk and it has forced the price down. But once the deregulation came to effect the dairy industry bought in a levy, which is 11 cents a, a, a litre on any milk, white milk, flavour milk, whatever. Now that levy, it goes into the state government bank, right? Now that is there for dairy farmers to apply for. The 11 cents a litre that we were paying um, for the restructure package actually came from the farmer's pocket in the first place. So. Um, we're actually paying for our own restructure package, which is a ridiculous part. And a lot of people saw the dangling of that carrot um, for that restructure package as a good reason to um, give it the nod. Well, deregulation just means that we've received less money for our effort and uh, our costs keep going up. And what happens is you can't replace your machinery and you just got less money to run your farm. And We haven't been able to carry out any major operations on the farm. You know, renovating paddocks, fencing, laneways, etc. We just can't expand because the money's not there. Yeah, I believe initially the reduced prices we're getting because of deregulation all comes about because the supermarkets putting pressure on the government so that they can just make more money from milk. You know, the, the average price paid to the farmers over the year, the, the free processes that there is, I'd say the average price would be about 27 cents a litre. And, uh, and milk's about $1.50, $1.60 a litre in the shops. And, uh, and that's all the farmers get, about 27 cents a litre. So someone's making big dollars out of it between the processor and, and, the, and the supermarkets.
deregulation hasn't really affected us too much. Um, it's affected the consumer a little bit. We always pass the prices on, but yeah, we've never really made any more money over the years. We've always always made the same margins. So wherever the money is going, um, it's definitely not to us. But at the end of the day, it's not the uh, manufacturers or the dairy farmers that they are the major losers because the biggest winners out of these are the chain, like the Coles and the Woolies. Yeah, Harvey was a great place as, as a young kid to sort of grow up in that town. It was always a, a vibrant community. I had a you know, lot of enjoyment playing football for Harvey Brunswick, played there for 16 years. The modest giant Ruckman didn't waste any time getting back to work after winning the Haywood Medal. And David Morris of Harvey Brunswick polled 28 votes to be the winner. 192 centimetre Ruckman was a popular win last night. He had a clear lead of eight points from his nearest rival, Al Shiosaki of Bunbury. This morning, a remarkably clear-headed Topham Morris was back on the farm. He's played with Harvey Brunswick since he was 15, notching up 134 league games. He and his wife Janine are still elated, but realise there's no time to waste. Thinking it over, there's a farm to run. In that earlier part of my career, I was actually invited to um, go up to Swan Districts by their general manager, um, but I could tell that um, I went up there for, to training a couple of times and played a couple of scratch matches, but you could sort of tell that um, uh, it had to be one thing or the other. You couldn't play footy uh, in WAFL and try and run a farm in Harvey as well, so um, the um, football aspirations had to slip by the wayside. And you really throw your heart and soul into um, into that kind of job because it's, it's not a job that you can do half-heartedly. You've got to give it all you've got. No, I definitely haven't got the same passion as what I used to have for farming because I can just see that we're just becoming like second-rate citizens and, and doomed to be peasants. In 2000, um, there was 480 dairy farmers in WA and I believe now there's only about 240. So that's virtually half, 50% of the dairy farmers have left the industry in five years and there's a lot more leaving in the next 12 months. You know, we're losing them, you know, 10 or, 10 or 15 every six months. We're going out of the dairy industry and that's all through deregulation. And so we won't have a dairy industry here in, you know, 10 years time. No, I don't really see that there's a great future for the younger generation in the dairy industry. As you know, we've sent a lot of our, our kids have been sort of told, you know, better off going to university or go, go and get an apprenticeship or just do something else other than come home on the farm. It's pretty scary actually, um, what's going to happen if I do go into the industry. Um, well, I don't know what's going to happen, I don't know how trends are going to change, or well, I hope they change for the better, especially in WA local market. I, I regret leaving the dairy industry in 2004, but if the industry had been in a lot better shape, it would have uh, made my decision a lot harder to actually do. But because the way it was, um, I, you know, there was really not a lot of light in the tunnel um, for reward for effort. Because of deregulation, you know, I have to, I'll sort of semi-retire, but I have to do something. So I've opted to go into running a bit of beef and see how that progresses in the next four, four to five years. We've got a new farm here and uh, it's got its challenges but um, yeah I uh, really look forward to doing it and I've been able to uh, bring some of my cattle from the, the from the dairy side of things uh, and mate them with the beef animals so, and uh, it's going to give me a lot of interest um, to do that in the future. Sunday both pitch in and lay on.